today on The Hopefulist. A Halloween costume gets pulled from the shelves, clocks go back this weekend, and I, The Hopefulist, am ruining Instagram. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Fry yay, fry yay, fry yay. People, we made it to the freaking weekend. It is Friday, November 1st. I almost wrote October 32nd. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it is indeed November 1st, 2019. It is day 50 of Gotta Get On Ellen. So, are we so happy that it is finally a cocktail Friday? I know I am. I've got some things to do today. I've got some people to see. I've got some partying to do. I've got to be up and out early, which is why I'm getting this on even earlier than usual. I have to go get my hair done in Pennsylvania today. I do have a hairdresser here in New Jersey close to home. But my hairdresser that I started going to, oh my gosh, I think 10 years ago now. I was going to say back in like 2009. So I've been going to her for 10 years. Craziness, I tell you, craziness. The reason that I know exactly when I started going to this hairdresser is because The first time I went to her was right before I went to Vegas. And I still look at those pictures all the time, and my hair looks amazeballs uh, because she's so good at what she does. So I have tried a number of times to get my highlights done by people around here. It never works out well. Uh, So now whenever I want to get highlights done, I just automatically go back to Pennsylvania which is about an hour and a half trip, uh, and she's a little pricier than, well, I don't know if pricier, but, you know, add in the gas, she's pricier. And then I usually get together with my girl, Dina, and uh, have some lunch. So it's a big day, uh, and then we will talk our faces off and then eat our faces off. I've discussed, you know, before and how about we talk and eat our faces off. We're going to go to one of my favorite places on the planet today for lunch and the diet will be off for today it's a place called julio's it is a pizza shop and they have what is called a cheesesteak in a pouch not your typical philadelphia cheesesteak it's it's not really pita bread but it looks like pita bread because it's like way thicker than pita bread but it's you know cheesesteak in a pocket Stuffed on in there. It's so good. And they also have these genicottis, which is basically a fried stromboli, but smaller. So Dina and I can never decide which one we want. So we always get one of each and split it. And then after that, I have yet another 50th birthday party. Yes, all of my friends are turning 50. I have three 50th birthday parties in a row. It's just starting it's just starting. So um, got a big day planned. Got to get my hair all looking uh, fabulous for my conference next week. It is getting so real. Now, I think I've mentioned before that I'm in this Facebook group for the attendees. And I mean, it's just nonstop posting at this time. People are so psyched. People are so excited about getting there and being there. And Uh, having the whole experience. I actually watched a review of the Rise Dallas uh, convention. Um, it, It was back in July, I believe, and somebody had posted it on YouTube. It was like a 10 minute review of the whole thing. And she just ranted and raved about how great the experience was. Um, Now, this one was for personal development, and our conference is, of course, for business. Uh, So, 
I think that it's going to be a lot of the same types of things. We're just going to have more business-related topics more than um, obviously working on yourself. But I think there's going to be a little working on yourself in there as well. Because you know how Rachel rolls. you got to work on yourself in order to spread it to every area of your life. So I'm going to have my hair done today. I'm very excited about that because nobody, nobody does hair like my girl, Lori. She is the best in the business, and I cannot recommend her uh, more than I do because she is the best. Works at, what is the name of her salon? Studio One. That is the name of her salon. It is in... Uh, Pendell, Pennsylvania, right along Business Route 1, right next to the beer store. All my favorite places together. (laughs) Okay, so you won't believe this story. And you tell me if you think that I'm being too nonchalant about it. I think this is the absolute most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Kmart has pulled a bride costume For Halloween, after a petition was filed and accused them of promoting and normalizing forced child marriage. Now, I'm not surprised about the petition. People are plum loco. People are nuts. People are crazy. They will take anything and try to turn it into their cause. The thing that really annoys me about this situation is Kmart, they, they, they buckled. They pulled it. It's a costume. It's a Halloween costume. Does that mean that nobody can be a nurse because it promotes child labor? To me, the whole thing is completely ridiculous. Now, before I go off on these rants, I do try to look at it from all aspects because there's a lot of things that I used to go off on a rant of, and now I can kind of see their point a little bit. But this one, I just don't. It's dress up. That's what Halloween is. You're dressing up something other than what you are. So to me, the fact that more and more companies are just crackling under this pressure from these lunatic groups is very disconcerting. I mean, I guess Kmart is very worried because they don't want the bad publicity and they're practically bankrupt already. I don't know. You you just got to stick to your guns sometimes. I think this is absolutely a ludicrous, but that is just my opinion. If you disagree with me, feel free to let me know. So I hope you all had a great Halloween. I hope you got to give out lots and lots of candy. I hope the kids all looked super cute and you get to dig into some of your kids' candy. Uh, That is the most fun part, right? Now, we did not have many kids. Last year, I got a ton of kids, and so I was, you know, I was prepared. Uh, A couple of kids took the um, string cheese, like I had mentioned yesterday, uh, because some some kids don't have, um, can't eat peanut butter. So um, I did have those for the ones that didn't have, uh, couldn't eat peanut butter, and it did have Spider-Man on the front of it. So it was, uh, you know, kid-friendly, so to speak. So I only had... I think three stops. One, I had a little boy by himself, then a little girl by herself. And then I had a group of three boys, and the one boy had two buckets. So I'm assuming he was uh, collecting for a brother or a friend or what have you, because he even said, one peanut butter, one no peanut butter. (laughs) So I was like, all right. So we didn't get many kids. Um, It's a little bit sad. It is You know, like I said, we live in a resort area, so they have come up with this map where, you know, you put your address on the map and then it shows that you are handing out candy. So the people drive their kids around this area. Right down the street, like 10 minutes down the street is one of those developments where, you know, everybody hands out candy. So most of the kids that live here just go there. It's just easier for, I guess, everyone involved. Uh, But... I did see a lot of people saying they probably will not participate next year because they bought all this candy and they didn't get that many kids. So now they're left with all this leftover candy, which 
ironically, a lot of people are complaining about, I, you know, I took candy that was already in my cabinet, so I'm good with the leftovers. But, yeah, normally if I would have had, like, peanut butter cups and Kit Kats like last year. Now, I do like the Kit Kats. I can kind of hold off on them. I'll put them in the free uh, in the freezer. Kit Kats are really good in the freezer. Really good. They're not, like, too hard. You can still bite into them. Um, and I do love to put the little fun size ones in there. I like the peanut butter cups. I am not a fan of peanut butter cups being frozen. So they wouldn't last as long, especially because my husband would eat them all, which is fine. I like me a good peanut butter cup once in a while. Not one of my absolute favorites. Uh, There's so much more I could totally have. But we do have these Take 5 bars that I always talk about. And I did look at the packaging yesterday. What I had was snack size. So it was better than fun size. Not full size, but way better than fun size. So um, don't forget, this weekend you will be turning your clocks back. Uh, That's right. You are going to gain an extra hour. What will you do with your extra hour this week? Will you sleep? I'm I'm pretty sure that's what most people will do. You probably will get up a little bit earlier just for the fact that your body clock. And if you have kids, kids don't worry about the clock. You know, you got a one-year-old. That one-year-old's going to wake you up. Typically at 5 a.m., you're getting up at 4 on Sunday. So keep that in mind. I'm sure you know that. So maybe I'll try to come up with something special to do for that extra hour that we're going to have this week. A whole extra hour. A whole hour. An hour is a really long time when you break it down and read half a book in an hour. Well, maybe not half a book. Depends on the book. So um, speaking of books, I'm, eating, I'm reading this really interesting book. I just started it last night, and I'm already on page like 55 or something. So like I said, you know, I can, I can roll through a book pretty quickly. I had heard about this book and this author who was on one of the podcasts that I listened to, and I, I don't know anything about the author. I don't remember her name, but the name of the book is Dear Martin. And it starts off with a a black man getting arrested for something he didn't do. And, you know, it shows a little bit of racial profiling. Well, it shows racial profiling. And it, what he does is he tries to look to Dr. Martin Luther King for guidance and realizes that what he went through is nothing compared to what uh, Dr. King went through, and yet he still was able to persevere and come out the better, stronger man, and, you know, the lack of violence and took away the anger and all that. So basically this story is being told, and then, you know, what he's doing is he's writing letters to Martin Luther King as if he were— still alive, asking for guidance, trying to act as he would in the same situations. It is very interesting. And, you know, it's it's so interesting as a white person to read this, to kind of give you the idea of what black people go through. Because as much as we hate the term white privilege, there is a lot of white privilege. Even just in a sitcom I was watching the other day, um, Bar- Bob Hart's Abishola or whatever. She's originally from Kenya? I'm not sure. But she said that um, race is not a big deal in her country and that when she came to America, she had to realize when she left the house every day that she was a black woman in the United States. And she said to him, you never go out and have to remind yourself that you're a white man in America, do you? And he's like, well, no. So as much as we, you know, kind of, it kind of gets our backs up a little bit when we hear that term, Uh, but there is a lot of legitimacy to it. And you can kind of educate yourself by reading books like this and just giving yourself a little bit more understanding. I've come to realize that the more I get angry about stuff is the more I don't put myself in those people's shoes. You know, oftentimes you start to get a better understanding when somebody you know goes through something or 
you you can visualize it happening to you as well. So the next time you start to get your back up about something, especially when it comes to like race relations, just try to put yourself in their shoes. Try to look at it from their point of view. 